Hi, now in this series of videos I'm going to be looking at how we can approximate various numbers. And there's three methods we're going to be looking at. There's this one that you see in this video where we're looking at rounding numbers to say the nearest hundred, nearest ten, or nearest thousandth and so on. And in the next video I'm going to be showing you how we can round numbers using significant figures and how we round numbers using decimal places. So for this video I'm assuming that you're familiar with hundreds, tens and units and when we have a decimal point that the next place value is the tenth value and then one hundredth and then the thousandth place and so on. Okay, so when it comes to looking at 7342 and we need to round it to the nearest hundred, what we're looking at is this three here, it's in the hundreds position. Okay, so let's just underline that there. So this number 7342 lies between two values that are related to the nearest hundred. That would be 7,300 as the lower bound and 7,400 as the upper bound with 750 in the middle. And we can draw a number line to illustrate that. So that when we look at 7,342 it's clearly to the left of the midpoint. So if we put it in you can see that this number is much closer to 7,300 than it is to 7,400. So rounded then to the nearest hundred, this is going to be equal to 7,300. Let's have a look at this second example. 10,676. We're being asked to round it to the nearest 10. So the digits that's in the tens column is this 7 here, representing 70. So this is going to be between the lower bound of 10,670 and the upper bound of 10,680, with 10,675 in the middle. Again, as illustrated with this number line here. And when it comes to placing this number on the number line, Where's it going to be? Is it going to be to the left or to the right of this midpoint? Well, when we put it on, you can see it's to the right. 10,676 is above 10,675 and therefore closer to 10,680 if we measure it to the nearest 10. So the answer here then is 10,600 and 80 to the nearest 10. Now you're not going to want to keep drawing these number lines I'm sure every time you have to round up anything. I'm just using it as a visual aid. Now there's a common method that a lot of people use and that is that they look at the next digit beyond the digit that we're actually working on that I've underlined here in blue. And if it is less than 5, we round down, and if it's more than 5, we round up. So if we go back to this number, 7342, we just look at the 4 here, and it's less than a 5, and so we round down. We just leave it as 73, but we fill in these two place values with zeros. So we end up with 7300. OK, as you see here. But in this example, after the 7, we see the digit 6. It's more than a 5, so what we do is we add 1 to this digit, the 7 in this case. So it becomes an 8, and we fill back with a 0 here. So you end up with 10,680. So let's have a look at how that pans out when we're working with these next two examples which I've picked as decimals. So in this next example 546.8 we've got to round it to the nearest unit. 
So we're looking at the units value, which is this six here. And if I look at the next digit, it's an eight, more than a five. So what I do is I would round up. I would add one to this value of six, making me up to 547. And we just chop the number off there. We've reached the decimal point, so it's just 547. And I'll illustrate that with the number line again, OK? Because if we did draw a number line, it's going to look something like this. We're working to the nearest unit. 546.8 then lies between 546 and 547, with 546.5 as the midpoint. And can you see that 546.8 is to the right of our midpoint and it takes us to 547 to the nearest unit. Let's see if we can apply that then with this next one. So with 129.08 rounding it to the nearest tenth that takes us to this place here the zero okay that's in our tenths column and we look to the next digit, it's an 8, it's more than 5. So what we do is we just add 1 on to the 0, giving us 129.1. So that is our answer, 129.1, without actually drawing the diagram. What we're saying though is essentially 129.08 what would the lower bound for it if we're working to the nearest tenth? It would be 129.0. And if we are looking at the upper bound, it would be 129.1. Here's our diagram. Here's our number line then. OK, 129.0, 129.1 is the lower bound and the upper bound with 129.05 in the middle. And you can clearly see 129.08 rounds up to 129.1. Now, I've got these two examples here and we've just got to take a little bit more care over these. Why? Well, let's just have a look, okay? With this first example, 0 0.08024, we need to round it to the nearest thousandth. And the digit that is in the thousandth position, that's the third place after the decimal point, is this zero here. Again, if we apply our method, the next digit after the zero is a two. It is less than five, so therefore we do not round up, okay? We just truncate the number here. So that means that our value will be naught point naught eight zero and again let's just draw up that number line so you can check it out okay this decimal here lies as between the lower bound of naught point naught eight zero and an upper bound of naught point naught eight one with naught point naught eight zero five as that midpoint and you can see our value is to the left of it closer to naught point naught eight zero so I hope you're getting the hang of this now. Now I've picked this next one because it, it's just going to throw up another idea. So we're looking at 70.984 to the nearest tenth. And that value is that 0.9 there. We look to the next digit. It's an 8. And that means it's more than 5 and we need to add 1 on to this 9. And if we have not one onto that nine, it's going to become a 10. But we would carry that value from the 10 across onto this zero here. So we actually end up with 71.0. So the answer to this one is 71.0. And you've got to be careful here. It's not 71, but 71.0. That zero there tells us that we would have had other digits behind here in that rounding process. And you can see those other digits were the 8 and the 4. Returning to our number line again, 
I've illustrated it here. 70.984 lies between the lower bound of 70.9 and 71.0. And you can see that it's to the right of our midpoint here, 70.95, taking us to 71.0, to the nearest tenth. Okay, we've got two more examples to go, and these are going to highlight another point. Up until now, I've been saying that if our value behind the one that I've shown in blue here is less than 5, we round down. If it's more than 5, we round up. So what happens if it happens to be a 5? Well, that's the case here. When it is a 5, we round up. As with the 295, we've got to give it to the nearest 10. So we're working with this value here, the 9, in the place of 90. So 295 lies between 290 and another 10 up from that is 300. So we would round this up, okay? This becomes 300. We look at the 5, add 1 on to the 29 there, and it becomes 30. But we have to carry that back by filling back with zeros to any decimal point that would exist, okay? So we end up with 300. On a number line, you can see it here. Okay, it, 295 falls on that midpoint, but we round up to the 300. Now we've got this last example, whereby we've got to round 268.352 to the nearest tenth. And that value in the tenth position is that three there, illustrating three tenths. But we've got the next digit here, which is a five, so we need to round this up. Add one on to three, and what we get is 268.4. Okay, so we have 268.4 there to the nearest tenth. Finally then, there's your diagram illustrating that. So in summary, hopefully you've got a grasp of this particular method, and we're going to be using a similar method when it comes to working with significant figures and decimal places using this idea that when you look at the next digit from where you are rounding from if it's less than a five you round down if it's more than or equal to a five you round up okay so in the next video i'll be showing you how we handle significant figures and later on decimal places and they all work off this kind of idea. Okay, thanks for watching and hopefully we'll see you in the next video.